Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 disappeared on March 8, 2014. On May 19, about nine weeks later, a leaked video was published to YouTube by a third party who claimed to have received it on March 12. The video shows what appears to be a jet airliner on fire, being trailed by three spiraling orbs. Eventually, the three orbs change to a vertical pattern and disappear in a flash with the airliner, leaving a dead-end trail of smoke in the sky. A month later, on June 12, a second video was published to the same channel that showed the exact same event taken from a different viewpoint. These videos have been deleted from YouTube, but can still be found on archive.org. Ashton Forbes and his team have been researching these videos extensively and have provided exhaustive evidence that these videos are legitimate, including digital forensics verified by CGI professionals, eyewitnesses, and government data. Forbes and his team have successfully addressed all debunker claims and have listed them for all to see on x.com at just x ashton so far nobody has been able to debunk this research their research shows that the first leaked video was taken from a pair of american signals intelligence satellites known as usa-229 twin satellites capable of creating 3d stereoscopic images by capturing two slightly different views the twin USA-229 satellites are logged at the exact location, time, and apparent angle required to have captured this video. This event occurred at around 2.30 in the morning. It was completely dark. The wavelengths captured by these cameras are for detail, and the stereoscopic effect allows for added depth perception. The source of the second video has been identified as an MQ-1C Gray Eagle unmanned combat drone with infrared and thermal technology. This video focuses on the heat signature. And the man responsible for leaking these videos seems to be Lieutenant Commander Edward Lin. He was accused of being a spy, but court transcripts prove that this was just spin. The details of his crimes, including the time they happened, are redacted. But it came out in the trial that the classified information in question was published on the internet and Lieutenant Commander Edward Lin had full security clearance to the same technology used to capture these videos. Using Inmarsat satellite ping data and military radar to track its path, and eyewitness testimony to verify it, Forbes put together the final flight path of Malaysian Airlines Flight 370. On March 7th, at 1642 UTC, Flight 370 takes off from Kuala Lumpur International Airport. At 1721, the plane abruptly turns back towards the nearest airport in Penang. A witness on an oil rig reported that the plane was on fire. Several witnesses along the east coast reported hearing a loud bang and seeing a glow coming from the plane as it passed overhead. At 1752, the co-pilot's mobile phone pings the local tower. At 1840, an eyewitness on a boat reported that the plane was glowing orange and appeared on fire. The Inmarsat ping data shows the same sharp left turn that we see in the videos, and then abruptly goes to zero as the plane disappears. The CCP released Chinese satellite images that appear to be three orbs. They first claimed it was debris, and later said that releasing the image was a mistake. According to Chinese media, 19 families have signed a statement claiming they made calls that connected to missing passengers after the disappearance, but without an answer. Some people are saying this was alien UFOs saving a plane from crashing, but this doesn't explain the fact that three different advanced US military surveillance cameras captured this one event. 23 of the passengers on board were related to free-scale semiconductors, a field leading the development of superconductor technology, which is what this appears to be, some type of superconductor targeting system for teleportation, which is reminiscent of what the Nazis were doing with their highly classified Die Glock project. Luminous objects like this were first reported in May of 1940 as Germany invaded Belgium, and by 1942, several people began reporting them, starting in the skies over Germany. American pilots during World War II called them Foo Fighters. 
And let's not forget Gary McKinnon, who in 2002 was accused of perpetrating the biggest military computer hack of all time, and who claimed to have seen evidence of an advanced off-world military fleet. So these videos reemerged on a Reddit, a subreddit called UFOs on August 7th or August 8th, depending on what time zone you are in. These videos had been reposted back in January of 2023. They've probably been reposted several times before that as well. When we dug into the archives of them, we found out that they go all the way back to at least May 19th, 2014. They might even go back as far as March 12th, 2014, which is just four days after the plane went missing. They were uploaded by an account called Regicide Anon. The video, the first video, the satellite videos, literal description is satellite video, airliner, and UFOs. It doesn't mention MH370 anywhere in this video. It says published May 19th, 2014. It says received 12 March, 2014. Posted May 19th, 2014. Source protected. We looked up this guy's old videos. His account's been deleted. He was a UFO uploader. He had other UFO videos that he had uploaded before this that are not nearly as high quality as this. You know, in my opinion, I would say many of them look, excuse me, very fake. But um, so this would kind of show that this person potentially was not the person that found these videos. They're not somebody who created them either. They're not somebody who is a CGI expert or anything like that. The fact that it says source protected while there are other ones we looked up, say like email submission, would tell us that there's somebody who actually leaked this video to Regicide Anon. And in fact, because of the receive date, if you believe that to be true, March 12th, 2014, we have just a four day window of opportunity. This would show that the person that leaked this was probably somebody that was right there when it happened, or they were informed of it right afterwards. We'll present evidence that they were there that day. It's interesting. We have two different angles of this, right? So again, it starts to show we're trying to capture intelligence here, right? This drone is not fast enough to catch a 777. It had to have intercepted it. We believe that it intercepted it from a, a base that it was deployed from in the Nicobar Islands. In fact, it's coming from the north here. Based again, we know this plane is moving south into the east based on the coordinates, which means this drone is somehow to the north looking south. And that's actually from the direction of travel we think the drone was actually deployed from. We believe this is an MQ-1C Gray Eagle. Now, if you Google again, SIGINT payload, you find the MQ-1C. We think that this line that we see above the top is the housing of the camera, not necessarily the wing. When we look at it, we can see the smoke. We can see the smoke accurately stack up from our perspective here as well. The drone actually feels a little bit of turbulence as it goes underneath the smoke trail of the plane and the trail of this plane. It's actually very close to the plane as well, which people have pointed out that you don't have planes fly this close to one another. So again, uh, indicative of an emergency event scenario. Now, as we watch this, it's very clear that it's being manually tracked. There's a person moving the, the camera around. They are not automatically tracking the plane in this video. They zoom in on this plane. They're trying to get the best intelligence possible on it. Then we see the first orb show up. We have a side-by-side -side that proves these videos are in perfect synchronization. When we look at this orb, it's a nearly perfect sphere. This appears to be a field around a smaller object. This is not a metal ball that we're looking at here. And we can kind of tell because we see the thermal layer kind of have a blending effect where it gets a little bit cooler as it goes around. Now, when these orbs start to get around it, this video shows a lot more information. And we can see that these, there's these trails. But when we look at these trails, they're actually in front of the orbs. The only reason why they look to be behind the orbs is because these orbs are moving at a high rate of speed, perfectly matching the speed of the airplane. And again, they're moving in this perfect triangle formation. They're also just ignoring gravity entirely. We believe that what it takes to ignore gravity like this is room temperature superconductivity, which can be either obtained through metamaterials such as LK99 or something similar to that, or by using a, a, some type of electromagnetic uh, event, a pulse, an accelerated pulse vibration. Now, this is then essentially giving them zero mass. And when you have zero mass, you can ignore gravity entirely. That's why we think we see this field. If you read the scientific paper by Salvatore Pius that I put out there, 
he argues for this field existing due to them basically separating themselves from the empty vacuum state, which is thought of as, you know, space time as we know it. So some people may think that room temperature superconductivity is debunked. Well, it looks like we had it nine years ago, at least the military did. So I think maybe we should give that one a second shot. Now, again, these lines are coming in front of it. So they are creating their own geodesics. Uh, Kim and I were looking at the video of gravity and how gravity really works. I would suggest you guys take a look at how gravity works in general, because I think it's not exactly the way that people get taught in school. Gravity is the interaction between mass over space time. And what's happening is over, as time flows, objects are uh, converging towards the curvature of mass disrupting space time. That's important because it looks like what's happening here is they're creating their own geodesics, their own gravity. They're almost like train tracks that they're running along here. So when we were watching this here, if somebody was faking this video as well, they would keep the plane in focus in the field of view all the time. But what we see here is the, the person who's operating this drone manually zooms in and now the plane gets out of, out of field of view. If you were faking this, this is not how you'd fake it. You'd fake it while the plane's in the field of view the entire time. This is because someone's actually trying to keep up with the plane and they've zoomed in. And if you were like zoom in with your camera while you're watching something, it's hard to keep it in the field of focus. Now they've zoomed in a ton here as well. Because what's going to happen is when this plane comes in, now we can see it very clearly. We can see this heat signature. This heat signature is in the same location as where these exhaust ports are, right near where the landing gear exists. So if you're watching on my stream, I'm going to go ahead and pull that up just real quick so you can see what we're talking about. And if you're not, you're going to have to just trust me that we can see that this heat signature right near the landing gear of the plane. It actually morphs as well. So if somebody's faking this, boy, they're going to a lot of effort to make it look like there's a real heat signature billowing smoke out of the back of this plane. And this is where you can see the smoke line coming from the back of the plane here, which is not lined up with the engine. You can see that it's actually right next to the plane here at a different altitude, a different height than where this engine is at. The smoke does not be, appear to be coming from the engine. You don't see the smoke coming from right back of the engine here. It's coming from this heat signature that we see down here. So we see the same spiral formation. Notice when I pause it here that there's a, what we call a monopole here. And tomorrow I'm going to be interviewing a guy named Bob Greenier who believes he can explain the movement of the orbs. He did a video called Fractal Toroidal Moments where he believes that what's happening here is that kind of as we've argued that there's essentially some type of pulse laser or something coming out of this that's able to create this geodesic. And we can see this spin on their axis here where we see this heat signature from the orbs. They're spinning around. And then before we see our zap happen, our transitional state change, the operator zooms out. To me, this indicates they knew exactly what's about to happen at this point. They know that the main event is about to happen. They're zooming out to get it perfectly in field of view here. And then what they're doing here is they're recording this to, for intelligence purposes. Either the U.S. government had the perfect assets and the perfect time to collect this, and we're seeing some non-human intelligence that we just got extremely lucky to get on video, or this is an operation that they were expecting. To me, this is an operation. Now, I'm going to try to capture it, but I actually have a better uh, field uh, uh, video. But we see the, the plane just disappear. The operator looks around a little bit, but they don't freak out. And then that's the end of the video. To me, this would be this would indicate that, oh, this is the original. So in the original here, it actually then shows a super slow-mo version of this. And it shows the orbs zoomed in here, where we can see the orbs in this field around the orbs. There's a higher quality version of this, which I'm actually not going to switch to because this version will work. So then there's a slow-mo version of our zap. We can see that the orbs actually converge on the plane right before this zap happens. This is a pretty extensive detail to put into your fake video. The monopoles actually begin to orient right towards the center as well. So we have all three monopoles orienting towards the center. Bob Greenier argued that what's happening here is creating an azimuth, which is basically your sphere around the plane that is then able to you know, see what we see from this macroscopic decoherence event. Here's the super slow-mo of it. I want you guys to notice that in the final frame, this plane blurs as well. So they start to converge here. And then right now, we don't see any blurring effect. In the next frame, all of a sudden, the orbs are flat. 
This would show gravitational lensing. They're creating a very powerful electromagnetic field here that is even potentially causing gravitational lensing on this plane. Like if you were looking at a black hole with a star behind it and you see this bent light come around it because of the huge gravitational mass of the or gravitational effect of the mass of the black hole. The plane is blurred. It's actually cooler than it was before. It's much more green now. And the size of the plane has shrunk a tiny bit. If we were to superimpose this over the, the previous image, you would see this plane get a little bit smaller. And so I actually have a picture of this if you're watching on my stream as well, where you can actually see it. The plane is bigger here. It's got, you can see the heat signature better. Next frame, it's blurred. We believe this blur is because it's accelerating already, it's starting to accelerate to the speed of light. And then the next frame, it gets encompassed by the, the, our endothermic event. This endothermic event that we just saw is black in our thermal. It's actually cold. So in the false color IR, it looked white because it's a false color IR. They're using fake color scheme on that because it's a computer generated uh, image that is using that SIBR system. But in this one, we can see very clearly here, this is a cold, dark event. So this cold, dark event is endothermic. If somebody was going to fake an event, they would fake it as an explosion because there's no basis to even think to create this. Somebody that would have to fake this is going to have to understand physics better than most PhDs out there. In order to create the pattern that we saw, they're going to have to understand math mo better than most PhD math experts as well. So this requires a huge amount of creativity if they were going to create this. There's no basis to copy this from. Uh, so what we see here is this endothermic event that's absorbing energy. We speculated that this is potentially sucking the energy out of these lithium ion batteries so that you could actually save this plane, prevent the plane from you know burning up anymore. Because the thing about these runaway lithium ion battery fires is that the energy in them is what keeps them lighting up over and over and over again. Um, it could also be that this event is so cold with this cold event that we see here that it is able to put the lithium ion battery fires out. But again, this is speculative.